disappointed about what is happening in our country. And I want to take a moment to express our community's deep grief for the loss of life of George Floyd and our anger at the continued failure to keep the, the faith and trust in law enforcement when, tra when travesties like this occur in our country. We have got to do better to restore the beloved community that we all deserve to live in. So with that, I also want to recognize that we identified 12 workers at the Cardenas Market in our beloved Fruitvale District of Oakland who tested positive this week for COVID-19. We recognize that the Fruitvale's zip code 94601 is the zip code with the highest instance of COVID take cases. And as we continue our commitment to addressing racial disparities in health outcomes, we are seeing the ravages of the failure of our policies uh, in the health impacts of COVID. We continue to see in Alameda County that Latinos are contracting COVID at three times the rate of whites and that African-Americans have twice the fatality rate of any other racial group. These are the injustices that we are committed to fighting, but we have to acknowledge them in this moment. I do also want to recognize the hope and the good things that are happening in our community. Uh, we are excited that we are opening our fourth testing site uh, with Alameda County in West Oakland next week. We also are continuing to expand our Great Plate program delivery to medically compromised and seniors living alone, meals right to their doorsteps. Again, if you know someone who you believe uh, should receive this wonderful benefit, please call 211 or you can call the City of Oakland at 238-FOOD, 238-FOOD. You can find out lots of resources to address food insecurity during this pandemic. And I wanna give a special shout out to the incredible staff in the City of Oakland's Human Services Department. They have been delivering 18,000 meals a week, 18,000 meals a week since the pandemic started to our Head Start families, our vulnerable seniors that usually get their meals at our senior centers and throughout Oakland at all of our homeless encampments. Thank you, uh, HSD staff. Tonight, we're gonna talk about summer. And for those of you who have kids, uh, many of, of us, uh, myself included, have celebrated graduations this week. In fact, for Oakland Unified School District, today was the last day of school. It certainly didn't feel like it. We feel like we had our last day back in March. Uh, but for parents who have been homeschooling their children, who have been trying to engage in distance learning, uh, we are looking at summer with a lot of uncertainty, a lot of trepidation. And so I'm very excited uh, after we give our, our weekly update um, to enjoy our incredible director of Parks, Recreation and Youth Development, Nicholas Williams, as well as Julie McCalmet, the coordinator of expanded learning programs for community schools and student services at Oakland Unified School District. So they will be coming up as our experts tonight. But for right now, let me give you my weekly update. Slides, please. This week, we crossed a tragic milestone in this pandemic. Uh, we actually surpassed 100,000 deaths in the United States due to COVID-19. Next slide. And in Alameda County, we saw the disturbing news that our cases have gone up in this last week. We have now actually exceeded Santa Clara County as having the most cases of any of the Bay Area counties. Now, Dr. Erica Pond, our health official, 
has said that she believes some of this could be the result of the recent loosening of certain restrictions, including a return of construction work. However, she is not so worried about it that she uh, has plans to roll back any of the restrictions, but she will continue to proceed with great caution in making any further loosening or changes in the current health advice and activity restrictions that we are under right now. Next slide. As you can see, um, this shows where we compare to other major counties within California. Uh, we are certainly doing better than a lot of the places in Southern California. And we also have been practicing more restrictions and that is likely to continue. I know that this is hard for all of us, but these numbers show that we have to keep doing this. Next slide. Uh, this again demonstrates where uh, different counties have had lifted uh, restrictions lifted and where they have remained in place. And as you can see, the Bay Area, along with Los Angeles, uh, have been some of the counties that have kept the most restrictions. Next slide. In good news this week, the city of Oakland was awarded $1.3 million from the state of California to support laid off low wage waker, workers uh, get new employment. And we will be working primarily with three great workforce development partners, Lao Families, the Unity Council, and the Private Industry Council all very long time respected workforce development partners that will be working specifically with low wage workers who've lost their jobs due to COVID. Next slide. We also uh, launched this week a kind of variation of our slow streets program, something called essential places. Identifying important places that people need to get to, like grocery stores, medical centers, testing centers, and seeing where those essential places were next to intersections with high incidence of traffic accidents. And so we quickly and very cost effectively put in new paint and safety cones and signage to try and make those intersections much safer for people that are walking and biking to these essential places. This was something that we heard especially from the residents in East Oakland. And so we unveiled this new intervention at the corner of Bancroft and Avenal, uh, right by our favorite uh, grocery store there, uh, which, which uh, is, is a definitely a community favorite please continue to give us feedback. And again, my hats off to the incredible city of Oakland workers who have been so creative, so responsive and willing to try new things, but also to listen to you as you tell us what is working, what isn't, what you want to see. Next slide. Uh, we also are unveiling some more slow streets coming up. I think we saw last weekend a number near the lake to try and again relieve more of the congestion in the lake area and you see a new uh, slow street being installed in the east oakland hills on nay avenue next slide uh i got tested last weekend uh it wasn't that bad at all it was super quick the people were so nice and i got my results quickly and i'm happy to say that i was negative if you want to see just how deep my sinuses are please watch the video on my uh, uh twitter and and all my different channels uh, yes you too can see what it's like to get a, a q-tip up your nose it is a very good cause the more that we get tested the more we are going to get a sense of what is going on with this disease. If you are working outside the home, we really need you to get tested. We cannot see outbreaks like what we saw at Cardinus Market this week. These are really um, important tools. These testing centers are free. No insurance is required. Please 
Uh, if you live or work anywhere in Alameda County, you don't have to be an Oakland resident, get tested. Call 615-5566 or go online to oaklandca.gov slash testing. I did and it literally took me two minutes to get my appointment at Allen Temple Baptist Church um, in East Oakland, a fantastic church that is hosting our newest testing site. And again, stay tuned, next week we'll be seeing a new site in West Oakland and we know another one is on its way in the Fruitvale. Next slide. Uh, these are all 14 mayors of Alameda County. Um, hats off to the mayor of San Leandro, Pauline Cutter. This was her idea to encourage everyone to continue wearing a cloth mask when you are out of the home. I know you're tired of hearing me say it, but wearing a mask when you leave the house, staying home as much as possible, constantly washing your hand and disinfecting surfaces and social distancing. These are the tools we have to fight this disease right now. It will be some time before we have a cure or a vaccination. Um, I was sharing today, I was on a call with Johns Hopkins and Harvard uh, around, I, I participate in a weekly update on the coronavirus pandemic. And we are entering the period they call the muddling middle. Uh, we are through the initial shock of this pandemic, but we are a long ways from its conclusion. And so continued vigilance, continued patience is needed right now. Next slide. One of our resources of the week, particularly in light of today's theme is Springboard. It's a curriculum company and it's partnering with Teach for America to provide free community programs to any Oakland youth in grades kindergarten through fourth grade. Uh, they want to. They want uh, everyone to know that this is for the community. It is not exclusive to the school district. Again, any Oakland youth, grades kindergarten through fourth, kids will receive 30 minutes of individual or small group phonics instruction each week. Each child who enrolls would be matched uh, one to one or at least one to three with a TFA core member who is trained to engage families and deliver weekly content. And families uh, can commit to four weekly workshops over the course of the program where they're gonna learn reading strategies to support home reading habits. So please, um, you please help families use Springboard Connect. That's their web-based app. That's another free offering to people who want to participate in this free program for the summer. And it actually will push out daily reading strategies to let families track reading progress for their kids. Next slide. Oh, I think I already covered that. All right, congratulations, class of 2020. Uh, we will never see a graduation like this again. Uh, I wanna give a special shout out to Monterra Middle School. I uh, am a proud uh, parent of a Toro graduate myself. Um, just cannot say enough about our educators in this moment who have been so valiant, so talented to try and provide special memorable experiences for our graduates in this very unusual and unpredicted climate. Um, also, thanks to Tom Hanks, who honored my alma mater, Skyline High School, with some words of encouragement. Um, and, and of course, it is, there's, it's always a moment to be proud of the incredible talent that has come out of our Oakland public schools and frankly, out of all Oakland schools. So with that, next slide. We want to remind you how you can participate in this conversation. Uh, we did receive some questions ahead of time that our expert speakers will try to address, but please send us your questions or your comments during this interactive town hall. You can scan the QR code that you're seeing on your screen. Uh, you can click on the link, or if you're calling from a telephone, you can text 142-833 one zero nine 
Again, I'm going to give that number one more time for those who can't see a screen. 142-833-109. Text that number to 72855. Again, the number to text to is 72855. And with that, I am really thrilled to present to you one of our incredible public servants, someone who gives his all to our kids every day, the Director of Parks, Recreation, and Youth Development, Nicholas Williams. Thanks, Nick. Thanks. Good afternoon, Mayor. Good afternoon, all Oaklanders who are attending this live town hall with Mayor Maff. Welcome on this evening. Uh, my name is Nicholas Williams. I am the Director of Parks, Recreation, and Youth Development for the City of Oakland. And tonight I also have the pleasure to talk a little bit about what Oakland Public Libraries are going to offer for the summer, in addition to what the Department of Human Services is going to offer for the summer in regards to children, youth, and families. Slides, please. So, so for youth, summer resources for Oakland youth and families, a presentation uh, coming from the Department of Parks, Recreation, and Youth Development, Oakland Public Library, and, o and Oakland Department of Human Services. Next slide, please. Um, so right off the bat, um, Oakland has revamped our annual, our big town camp series. Town camp is the um, city's answer to, equitable answer to, uh, quality services, town count, summer services for all of Oakland's youth. Uh, because of the COVID-19, we have revamped uh, our town camp. We normally serve anywhere from 1,000 to 1,200 kids a day. Uh, but due to COVID-19, uh, we're going to be able to serve about 500 kids uh, across the city in 22 recreation centers. So we have re revamped the town camp to serve children of essential city workers and those who must leave the house to go to work. For those of you that are on the phone, let me give you some information for the website. It is www.oaklandcalifornia.gov backslash services and backslash learn about town camp. Uh, we will make sure that that gets in the chat for you. Uh, we are tentatively scheduled to open town camp for six weeks, beginning the week of June 29th and running through August 7th. Uh, camp will operate Monday through Friday from 9 a.m. to 4.30 p.m. And there will be a strict adherence to health and safety practices. Um, we will keep all of the children in pods. Um, children will only be able to uh, interact with the children within their pods. Um, and this is done for safety reasons. And so we're able to contain the spread of COVID-19. Next slide, please. Uh, the Department of Parks, Recreation, and Youth Development has uh, been actively working on the Park Ambassadors Program. So over the last four weeks, Parks Ambassadors have been out in all of City, city of Oakland Parks um, to include Lake Merritt. Uh, we have been um, distributing face coverings to those that don't have face coverings. Uh, we have been giving wellness in, uh, education about where testing uh, facilities are and talking about park rules with park users. Um, it's been a wonderfully received program. Um, we have been able to provide over 2,000 masks to park users and, and people have been extremely um, uh, appreciative of the information that they have received from the park ambassadors. Also over the last couple of weeks, Parks, Recreation and Youth Development has done free student coding classes uh, we have over a thousand hours of youth, adult, and senior specific programming and to include all types of workout um, classes that occur throughout the day. And we have weekly activities for kids. Um, you can find all of that information at oaklandca.gov backslash parks, recreation, and youth development. Next slide, please. So in conjunction with the Department of Human Services, Parks, Recreation, and Youth Development has a summer food program for children. Uh, we will provide free weekly meal distri distribution through the city's emergency operations center. Currently, those operations begin June 1st. Site meal service will start at town camp when town camp starts on June 29th. Uh, that will happen at four recreation centers throughout the city. 
at 10 Oakland Housing and Authority sites and five community sites. We'll make sure to get that information put in the chat as well. Next slide, please. The Department of Human Services also offers the Oakland Fund for Children and Youth Summer. The website is www.ofcy.org, ofcy.org. This is a 2020 virtual programs that help close the summer learning gap. Um, there are also opportunities for youth summer employment um, and you can re find those opportunities again at the website, www.ofcy.org. Next slide, please. Additionally, the Department of Human Services has Head Start. They are currently enrolling children through ages of zero through five um, and pregnant mothers for an August 2020 start. Home or center-based programs with full day or part day options are at sites throughout Oakland. This is a high quality educational services. Uh, the kids get nutritious meals and there are wraparound services for health and family support. Next slide, please. Additionally, the Department of Human Service has aging services. Um, there's food information and referral services will be provided at all four of the senior sites. Uh, the seniors, centers are being disinfected and improved during closure. Additional classes have been hosted online via Zoom. Next slide, please. The Oakland Public Library has offerings for families as well. The 2020 summer reading program, uh, they'll be uh, able to read and win prizes. There are programs for all ages. The information for the library is the phone number is 510-238-3113. And for the Oakland Library, the website is www.oaklandlibrary.org backslash summer. Um, kids will have the opportunity to win free prizes um, and there will also be sidewalk library services added. We ask that you check back into the library website for updated information. Next slide, please. Um, that concludes our information for the evening. Thank you for allowing us to participate. We stand ready to answer any questions that may come up. Thank you. Thank you, Nicholas. And again, if you've got questions, please put them through on Thought Exchange. Next, we're gonna hear from Julie McCalmont. Um, again, Julie's with Oakland Unified School District. I know uh, she's in charge of summer learning, but I know she got a lot of questions about what is school gonna look like in the fall? And sometimes, uh, People are going to have to get used to us as public officials saying, we don't know yet, but we're going to be working on it. So Julie, um, thank you for joining us tonight. Thank you for everything you do to take care of our babies, um, Julie. Thank you. Hi, everybody. My name is Julie McCalmont. I'm the coordinator of summer learning programs, with Oakland Unified, and I'm just really happy to be able to, to speak to the Oakland community. I've been with the district for almost 20 years, it's been a lot of my, um, teaching years at Oakland High School. So shout out to my Ohio Wildcats out there. So let's talk about, let's talk about summer learning. Um, so uh, let's see if I can see my slides. Um, the first thing I wanna let you know is that summer learning is going strong with Oakland Unified. So even though we are in a distance learning format, we still have enrolled 4,000 students for summer learning. And what that's uh, gonna look like is at the elementary level, um, students are going to be in in small group classrooms with their credential teachers working on their literacy skills their math skills um, so they're still keeping learning going um, in addition at the, at the elementary level we have our community lead agency so these are the organizations that typically um, are after school providers and they are going to continue to offer enrichment during the summer so even though it's distance learning we're still engaging we're, get, we're encouraging students to be active. They're gonna be able to sign up for Zumba classes and some are gonna have STEM kits mailed to their house so we can do hands-on activities. So we're not letting the fact that we're all having to, to be in our homes all the time to stop us from learning, to stop us from being engaged and to stop us from really feeling like they're, we're participating in the learning community. So we're really excited at our, for our elementary programs. Um, middle school, it's a similar model in terms of it's a mixture of both academics and enrichment. 
So kids, again, will be able to keep going with their learning. They'll have, they'll have screen time with a credentialed English teacher. They'll also be working on their math skills. And then in the afternoon or a little bit later in the day, working with a lead agency. Um, what's special about the lead agencies for us is that they're gonna be providing wellness checks, really making sure that families have everything they need, connecting with kids, making sure the social emotional uh, aspects um, of, of their life are, are in balance and that we're, we're still just keeping kids involved, keeping them engaged. Um, at the high school level, we're still keeping our programming strong. Nothing is gonna stop our high schoolers from staying on track to graduate. So if a kid might be uh, 10 credits behind, uh, maybe they've got a little D or an F on their transcript, we're gonna be able to offer them um, online classes where they can make up their credits. So that's really exciting. Um, we have uh, online internships happening at the, at the high school level. And all in all, we've been amazed at the level of engagement and the level of enrollment for summer learning. Um, and so we're, we're really happy um, that we're able to offer this, this extra month of instruction. Um, we're gonna get started on June 8th. We'll be done by July 2nd. And that's a good segue into town camp um, right after that. So um, next slide, please. Um, I wanted to make sure you had my website where you can click and get more information on uh, the different programming and the names of the organizations um, that we're working with to um, provide us with um, our, full, our full programming. The way that we um, do registration for summer learning, and this was a question that had, had come in, is that we have our priority families. We, um, we invite people to enroll in summer learning. Um, we are using Title I funds, and so we try to prioritize our families who are, who are low income, who are on free and reduced um, lunch programs. Uh, we are prioritizing our English learners, um, our newly arrived immigrants, and we, we invite them to, to enroll and invite them to, to be a part of the summer learning. And like I said, space is limited. Um, we might have a couple of spots available, so please reach out to your principal. I know today's the last day of school for the children. However, your, your principals and your admin assistants and everyone will still be working through next week. So if you feel like um, your, your child would benefit or be eligible for this program, please reach out to your principal and they can provide you with an online registration link. And I also wanted to provide you with my email um, if you had any questions about summer learning or what some opportunities are um, for your children. So next slide, please. I wanna talk about some other summer resources. So we know we're gonna have our 4,000 students getting all that really good uh, summer learning and keeping their academic and enrichment programs going. But there's other things that we're gonna be doing as a district um, to support the Oakland community as well. First and foremost, summer meals. Uh, it's been one of the most important things we've been doing in the last couple of months with COVID-19 response. And we're happy to report that we're actually doubling the number of sites for the summer. So we're gonna go to 24 sites across the city. We analyzed where families were having to travel to get to our current 12 sites. We found some areas where families were having to travel a little bit more than they, they really uh, wanted to, or it was really a hardship for them. So we're expanding the sites. It's open to any Oakland child, 18 and under, and we're gonna be just keeping the same days, Mondays and Thursdays uh, from 8 a.m. to 12. And this is gonna go from June 1st to July 31st. I've got a link there to the maps of where all the sites are. And our info flyer is in English, Spanish, and Chinese if you need uh, further support. Uh, next slide, please. A couple other elements uh, that the district is doing this summer to support families and kids. So, uh, as we know, we're in a distance learning format now and, and so much learning and so many apps are really what uh, are, uh, enable kids to keep, keep learning going. The good news is, is that those apps are still gonna be available to Oakland Unified School District kids. So even if you're not enrolled in one of our summer learning programs, if you fire up that Chromebook and go in through your portal, you're still gonna have access to those same learning apps. So if you have something really fun, I know uh, middle school kids love their freckle. You've got your Raz kids. You have all these different apps that you're, that kids really enjoy learning from. They're very engaging. They're very interactive. And so we want you to keep doing that um, through June and July. And also I have a link there at Family Central 
and that's a great web page for all families to go to uh, with Oakland Unified. It has a nice, clear format that explains exactly what your options are for online learning over the summer. Um, you might have heard about the great donation we got from Jack Dorsey from Twitter, $10 million to support technology. Because of that huge gift of supporting technology, uh, we are allowing our kids to keep their Chromebooks through the summer. So if a child had checked a Chromebook out to help them with distance learning, the good news is you're going to keep that Chromebook all through the summer. And so we want kids to continue with their online learning apps and just keep learning going. Um, we know there's been a loss of instructional minutes through, through all of this transition. And so no reason to stop. We want, we want kids to keep on learning, stay reading, stay engaged, work on those math skills. Um, another thing I want to mention is this Wi-Fi access map. If you click on it, what we've done is we've boosted our Wi-Fi range at certain hubs across the city. So what a family could do is if they're having a struggle with Wi-Fi access at their home, they could drive to the parking lot of these areas and get really strong Wi-Fi and could actually log in and do some engagement uh, with their Chromebook in that way. So go ahead. And, and click on that link if you want to see where those Wi-Fi boosts are. In addition, with the Family Central webpage, if you're needing access to a Chromebook, if you're needing help with a hotspot, anything related to technology and access, we definitely want to hear from you and want you to reach out um, so we can help connect you with a Chromebook and connect you with a hotspot. Um, at the same time, we had a generous donation from Hulet Packard and they are going to provide educational packets, old school paper packets, mailed directly to all of our Oakland Unified elementary students in K through four. So we know it's nice to take a break from the screen and just do some back to the basics, uh, pen and uh, paper and pencil work. And so we're really appreciative of, of HP for providing that service for us. And then lastly, I wanted to make sure you know about InPlay. Um, inplay.org backslash Oakland is an online directory of all summer learning programs across the city. Now this, this will have the offerings of Oakland Parks and Rec. It'll have the offerings of OUSD summer learning. It's gonna have the offerings of any community program that's offering some sort of service, be it an essential uh, service for an essential worker that might be in person, or for the most part, it's gonna be a lot of distance learning opportunities. We are impressed with a lot of our local organizations who have made the pivot to online learning. So if you feel like you want some help with some engaging activities for family, uh, for your kiddos to log into this summer, please go to mplay.org. It has a really cool interactive map where you can, you can search for what you're, the type of program you're looking for. You could type in STEM, you could type in music, and it'll show you in the map of Oakland where those programs um, are held and how, and how to connect. And I think those are my slides. Thank you so much for the opportunity uh, to, to speak with you. I, I, I did want to just mention um, some of the FAQs that came through around summer learning. Um, one of the question was about um, how did the 4,000 kids, how, how were they selected? Um, we know we're a, we're, a school, we're a city of 36,000 youth. How did we select the elect 4,000? So these are our targeted populations. These are kids who are eligible for Title I funding, um, English learners. Uh, uh, kids that really need that, those additional learning to, 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 stay, to stay above the curve. Um, and again, as, as, as the mayor had mentioned before, a lot of questions for the district came through about next year and if we're going to be in an online learning format. And again, we don't know exactly. It was a good opportunity. We will be in some form of online learning. It could be blended. Um, but we don't know exactly. There's going to be guidance from the state coming next week um, and of course, we have to follow the guidelines and then we have to follow the CDC guidelines and then we have to follow the Alameda County Health Guidelines. So we're really taking in a lot of information. But what we are doing in the meantime is we have created fall implementation focus groups. And these are, these are broken down into six areas. There's a whole focus just around instruction. What are we going to do with the master schedule? How are we going to, how are we going to stagger student groups? How, how do we keep kids safe? There's a whole function, function on operations and food, nutrition. Um, there's a focus on fiscal technology access. There's a focus on wellness, social emotional for both the staff and the students. How are we taking care of each other during this time and how are we make sure we're, we're, we're keeping our wellness in check? And then of course there's community. 
Um, so we're going to be spending all summer working on the opening of school. And we will, of course, keep you in the loop as soon as we have more definitive information. Our superintendent will be communicating with you. Our chief academic officer, Sandra Aguilera, will be communicating with you. Um, and we, we look forward to you know, creating an innovative and safe opening for Oakland schools in the, in the fall. Julie, Julie, thank you so much. That was that was really engaging. You you must have been a teacher at some point in your life. Oh yes, you? yes. Ten years, can, ten years. Oakland High School Wildcats. <laughs> I put the the backdrop here of the old school uh, chalkboard just to remind us what how school used to be. <laughs> All right, right. Well, you know, this time we we still have a little rivalry with Ojai, but oh, we're all we're all, we're all OUSD right now. Um, so thank you for sharing that. Um, Again, I'm going to put up the slide about Thought Exchange. If you've got questions, now's your chance to send them in. Um, I did promise to acknowledge that tonight, Children's Fairyland, since we're talking about summer for kids, um, let, let's all like shed a little fairy tear that our beloved Children's Fairyland is closed right now. Tonight, they're actually having their virtual gala. So um, shout out to Children's Fairyland. What a, what a beloved institution for our city. Um, I'm gonna, uh, while you all send in your questions, uh, again, please scan the QR code or, or click on the link. Um, I'm gonna answer some of the questions I got ahead of time. Um, what, the first question is very relevant. What will happen to the shelter in place edict starting June 1st? And how does early phase two affect it? Government needs to give direction on this because people feel they haven't been told if it's going to be extended and if so, for how long? So I did get this answer directly from our health officer, Dr. Erica Pond. And she uh, reminded me that when they put out the last health order, actually moving us to what we call early phase two, uh, the order they put out on May 18th, that they uh, put that the current kind of restrictions, including shelter in place, do not have an end date. They do not have an end date. And that they will be re reassessing the current orders every two to three weeks. So they will be reassessing on June 1st, but do not expect the shelter in place to change at that time. She is very concerned, not just about the increasing number of cases, but also the increase in hospitalizations. Uh, so this is not just a result of the fact that we're doing a lot more testing. We are seeing more COVID cases in the hospitals and those are our most serious cases. So get ready that things are not likely to change on June 1st and that because of this recent increase, you're hearing Governor Gavin Newsom talking about, you know, restaurants can open and hair salons his guidance is not being um, followed it, it, and that then he's okay with that. He's being very clear that if any county wants to be more conservative, wants to go slower than what he's putting out there, that that rules the day. So just know that when you hear the governor talk about things, it might not be true in Alameda County. So be sure to check. I think the San Francisco Chronicle and the East Bay Times have done a really good job. A lot of newspapers are making their sites available for free during COVID. And so they are giving up-to-date information about the restrict restrictions in place for our community, our community. And just know we are taking a far more cautious approach than the governor. Uh, the next question is, Oakland slow streets provide great ways for kids and families to get outdoors and exercise while socially distancing. Can you provide tips and ideas? So yes, uh, please go visit the slow street near you. Um, a number of them are very long. Uh, the one near where I live in the Diamond goes uh, from close to Diamond Park all the way across High Street you know, almost to kind of where MacArthur bends down towards Mills College. And that is a great place to jog, to bicycle, to roller skate. Uh, you do need to be cautious because local traffic is still allowed, but these are often very long stretches where you are allowed to be in the road. I think I even saw a DJ station. 
set up on Shafter uh, in the Rockridge area on that slow street. So different communities are bringing out chalk, they're decorating their streets, uh, they're putting banners on the, the signs. Um, please feel free to claim these streets as community assets, do practice social distancing, do wear a mask, but come out, exercise, be outdoors. It is good for our mental health. And it also helps give our parks a break, especially our lake a break. Uh, my next question is, are increasing numbers due to activity at the lake from three weeks ago? And this person adds, had enforcement begun at that time, perhaps we would not be seeing numbers increase. And Nick, I'm gonna let you chime in on that, but before I do, I just want to say, and, and again, this, this can be controversial and uh, it may have to end, but I have taken the position that enforcement, the giving of of tickets, of actual monetary fines is just not appropriate in this moment. People are without jobs, they are struggling, and giving them a monetary fine, I don't think is the best way to really enforce these health orders. Uh, the more that people see compliance from others, the more that we are educating them and also giving them the means to comply. Uh, and, and we've been distributing a lot of free masks. Um, I believe that that is a more effective and appropriate response in this moment. But Nick, can you please chime in on uh, the lake situation? Yes, Mayor, thanks. Um, so over the past uh, three weekends, uh, we have engaged what we call the COVID-19 park ambassadors. Um, so anywhere from 15 to, uh, to 18 uh, park ambassadors have been not only walking around Lake Merritt, but other city parks, uh, again, sharing information about the COVID-19, asking people to, re to, to, to be cautious about their social distancing. Um, if we see guests that do not have facial coverings, we have um, facial coverings. Uh, we got a bunch of donations from the Warriors for facial coverings. And so we have been passing those out. Um, and then just sharing of information. Um, you know, people were concerned about possible testing sites. We were able to get information about the testing sites. Um, we have to remember that Lake Merritt is the city's uh, great asset. And so it's a place where everybody wants to be. It's a place where everybody is welcome to be. Uh, but during this season of COVID-19, our efforts are, are clearly focused towards public safety. And we're just trying to make sure that we keep our patrons safe. Thanks. All right. Thanks, Nick. And thanks for all that you've done. Um, you know, lots of creative ideas coming from Nick Williams, uh, the ambassadors, not allowing the parking on the lakeside. Um, we definitely saw some good uh, results from, from all of that. So uh, continue to give us your opinions. If you believe I need to be stricter and that we do need to start giving out fines, you can let me know that. Um, again, I am concerned that people are pretty stressed out right now. Um, last two questions before we take the um, thought exchange questions. What is the plan for addressing gun violence in East Oakland? My kids are afraid to play outside because they hear gunshots almost every day. First, let me give you my deep apologies that that is something that your family is having to go through. Uh, and it is, it is indeed correct that we have seen some increase in some group conflicts that have uh, increased the incidence of gunfire in Oakland. Um, I, I am only slightly relieved to say that, that uh, much of that has been gunfire and our homicide rate is actually down considerably this year, um, but it is just a very, very serious problem. One very specific thing that we're doing that is new is we are combining our efforts around violence prevention with COVID education. And this is a strategy that came out of our race disparities task force. Uh, and so uh, I wanna give a big shout out to Crank Start Foundation, which is funding this intervention to hire very carefully selected messengers, violence interrupters, who are not only going to interact very directly with people who we believe are engaged in this particular gun conflict, but also to talk to them about 
the health impacts of COVID and to try and help get them into healthier and safer conditions. So that is part of our message of peace and nonviolence uh, and love uh, as well as health. Uh, but please uh, let us know if there are some specific things in your neighborhood. Your, um, uh, you can please call the mayor's office if there's some specific information that we need to know about your neighborhood. Again, our number, call it any time, is 510-238-3141. Uh, and then last question before we turn it over to what we got live. Um, it's about garbage. Um, will there be anything done about dump, the dumping of garbage all over Oakland? Why is the homeless in Oakland growing unchecked? Um, why have the measures not been helpful? Uh, there are a lot of people out. There's no going back. Please provide more garbage pickup, especially at the lake and other high impact areas. So I want to acknowledge that during the first eight weeks of the shelter in place, Oakland suspended most of its public services. We had maybe 30% of our public works crew working. Now I'm hoping that you're gonna start seeing a difference in the cleanliness of the city as we just last week returned all our workers back to work. We also um, entered into a special agreement with waste management to send crews out to do some proactive uh, pickups to address the huge backlog of dumping complaints. Um, we rely on you to help us be our eyes and ears to tell us where there is illegal dumping that we need to pick up and also to please help us because this is some place where I am issuing fines, where I absolutely am doing enforcement if people are dumping in our neighborhoods, they need to pay the price for that. So please help us if you have a camera, if you have any information, a description of a vehicle, we want to track that person down and hold them responsible. We have special uh, environmental enforcement officers that actually go through illegal dumping sites to try and track back the source of the dumping. If you have any information, if you want to report an area that needs attention and needs to be cleaned up, you can do that from inside Oakland by calling 311, or I really encourage you to download the Oak 311 app. It's, it's a really easy app. You can take a picture. It, it geolocates the um, place of the dumping. It allows you to report that to us so that we can very effectively send the right equipment to clean up. But do know that um, we, we absolutely uh, ha uh, let the city get very dirty and we are working to address that backlog. One other thing about garbage, uh, waste management has suspended the bulky pickup program from your curbside. However, they are allowing you to go to the transfer station at Davis for free at this time and dump your bulky waste there. And it doesn't count against your one bulky pickup a year. And maybe our interns can put up the information and the phone number to schedule your delivery to the um, Davis Street Station for waste management if you have things that you would have otherwise put out for your bulky pickup. But I am sorry that you're seeing more mess in Oakland. We are working to clean it up. And I apologize quickly on the um, homeless situation. We um, are following health orders and we are not um, breaking down uh, or, or uh, dispersing homeless encampments at this time per the health orders. We are trying to move our most vulnerable uh, into the hotels that Alameda County has secured with the help of the state of California. And we also have the um, Project Home Base trailer park operating by the Coliseum. We are working on um, a, in concert with the Oakland City Council to develop some better policies around encampments in Oakland. We recognize that we have got to do a better job of balancing the needs um, of all of our residents um, while we navigate this, this horrific housing crisis and the moral outrage of homelessness. Uh, with that, uh, I believe we have some questions from our viewers, if um, you can put them up on the screen. Great. All right, I think Nick, the first one is for you. 
Uh, it's about the lake area. It says it's nice to have Bellevue, not open to drivers, but service vehicles drive there and they drive too fast. And dog owners think they're entitled to have their dogs off leash. What are the rules and how can people in a positive way, knowing that there can be community tension, not everybody likes to be told what to do, how can they work uh, around the rules and people's behavior? So about the uh, service vehicles driving too fast, that's an easy one. Um, we will have internal conversations about that and you should see an immediate change at that right away. Um, with the dog owners, um, currently we're just asking people to police themselves. Um, you know, people are using the parks to get out and have a walk, uh, to, to have some fresh air, to clear their mind. Um, the whole city is dealing with this COVID-19 and it's affecting us all very differently. And so we're just asking dog owners to just be respectful of the fact that, you know, that uh, people are in the park. Um, we know that, you, you know, your dog's friendly with you, but some people are just really afraid of dogs. And it, it's not fair if they don't have a, a place to, uh, to walk without the fear of being chased or attacked by a dog. And so we're asking all dog owners to, yes, please have a walk with your dog, but please keep your dog on a leash. Um, in that same spirit, we are asking citizens not to patrol and police one another. Everybody is dealing with their own uh, issues and crises. And so we're asking everyone to just police themselves. Thank you. Yeah, no, I think that's great advice. I know we all um, are nervous right now, but uh, it's not always welcome. And the best way that we can get other people to comply with these orders is to model the good behavior. Um, the next question is also about homelessness. I think we were told by DPWPD that the city will not enforce against homeless or undocumented with respect to illegal dumping, theft, burning wire, et cetera. Um, uh, first of all, we, uh, uh, as a sanctuary city in Oakland, we do not ever ask people what their immigration status is. So there are certainly no rules that are uh, either enforced or not enforced with regard to someone's documented status. With regard to the homeless, we are not going to penalize people for being poor and not being able to have a home that has garbage service. We have increased garbage service at encampments throughout the city, and we do send up cleaning crews um, to try and, and clean up around homeless encampments you should see an increase in that service soon. If there are particular homeless encampments that you believe could use more cleaning, you can report that to 311. Or again, uh, if you want to email it, it's oak311 at oaklandca.gov. Um, our eventual solution to this problem will be to house people. Um, again, lots of questions about the lake. Nick. Why aren't animal control or OPD patrolling the lake? Uh, both animal control and OPD have been patrolling the lake. Um, I will though, however, speak to the director of both of those departments and relay the information that um, you know, possibly more presence is welcome. Yeah, I will say I saw um, police out very visible in parked along the, the median, kind of the center lane uh, of, of uh, Lakeshore uh, a couple weekends ago. Um, lots of nice presence. But again, we are trying to not um, give people tickets. And I will say animal control is pretty busy at the Rose Garden. We have a wild turkey problem at the Oakland Rose Garden. Unfortunately, we have to have the Rose Garden closed right now to the public because we have a wild turkey who is protecting his mate and his chicks, and he has become very dangerous. So we apologize to you that the Rose Garden is not open, but we have to protect our wild turkey. Um, Danielle Warren asks about updates on encampment cleaning. Um, Danielle, I will ask my interns to get you a link to the page, but if you do a Google search, you should be able to find a link on the City of Oakland's website that actually shows the schedule for encampment cleanings. And again, if there's an encampment that you feel is not getting cleaned and should be added to the list, please send it to 311. Um, all right. Questions about the ambassadors, Nick? 
Uh, so the ambassador program currently works Friday, Saturday, and Sunday from 12 p.m. to 5 p.m. They're in groups of three or four, and they walk um, around the lake and, and again, at other uh, City of Oakland parks. Uh, they are not volunteers. They are currently disaster service workers um, who work either for the Department of Parks, Recreation, and Youth Development, the library, or other city departments who are on other job assignments. Um, they often will approach the owners of unleashed dogs and will ask them to, plot to, to comply with the rules to keep the dogs on the leash. Uh, they uh, try to stay fairly mobile. Uh, we will not engage in any negative way with any patron. Um, and so we're just sharing what the rules are, providing information, um, smiling, and then uh, proceeding to uh, move to other areas of Lake Mary and other city parks. Great. Cecilia has a question for me about the prostitution on International and a suggestion that I should be stricter. I appreciate that feedback, Cecilia. Um, and when it comes to prostitution, uh, I am happy to be as strict as possible, particularly against the Johns, the, the people that are exploiting uh, women. Many of the women uh, on International are being trafficked. They, they are in kind of human slavery and uh, it, we take it extremely seriously and work closely with our district attorney. Um, I want to recognize that the Oakland Police Department is working uh, as if nothing has changed. They are working uh, every shift. They are out patrolling. Uh, and again, uh, we encourage you to help us uh, identify hot spots. Um, and, and this activity is one of the things that is extremely tragic. Um, other resources are Missy uh, is, is a very great organization that is helping women leave, uh, leave their uh, entrapped situations. Um, all right, keep scrolling for us. Uh, I think we did talk about um, unle the Unleashed Dogs. Um, Andrew has a question, isn't the increased rates uh, related to increased testing? It's obvious to me. We, we would have hoped that to be the case, Andrew, but because we've also seen an increase in hospitalizations for COVID, that is what leads us to believe it is not just t uh, testing. So um, again, uh, it's not so dire that uh, the health officer is planning to um, add more restrictions, but she is probably going to be more cautious about um, loosening the restrictions. But the increase in hospitalizations is the thing that is giving us all concern. Um, all right, I'm gonna, uh, I, I think we we uh, heard about the parking enforcement issues uh, on Bellevue. Um, we will attend to that. I, I got some uh, other co uh, inputs on that because this was last weekend was the very first weekend of slow streets on Bellevue. So we will continue to look at uh, parking enforcement. Just, um, in parking enforcement in general, you, you notice that we have not been enforcing meters we have not been enforcing street sweeping uh, ticketing. Uh, we are looking at bringing back meter enforcement starting June 1st. So warning, June 1st, meters will start being enforced again, uh, unless we hear uh, significant feedback about that. Um, please do let us know if you think meters are in a residential area where people are having to work from home or stay home. Um, we. I am encouraging us to not ticket for street sweeping uh, for that reason. All right, um, Julie, I'm excited. There's a question for you about Carl Monk Elementary. Can you read it from your screen? Sure, it says, uh, how are you guys going to make sure that the staff at Carl Monk Elementary are following the rules? Um, and then that looks like right underneath there. How are you guys going to make sure that the staff at the schools are following the rules? So that's all part of, um, you know, part of our trainings that we're going to be doing. And, and actually, the teachers are very concerned about this as well. Everybody wants to make sure that we're going to follow safety protocols, that we're going to be sure to, to follow all the steps and all the guidelines. And we're really going to be spending these summer months creating the procedures, creating 
the systems and making sure we have all the supplies and all the cleaning materials that we need to make sure the environment is clean and that we're um, making sure that kids aren't unnecessarily exposed to any uh, harmful conditions or any environment that could increase exposure. So this is something that everyone in the district is thinking about and trying to come up with the most careful and thorough process we possibly can. And we will be working very hard to push out communications to all families to, to reassure you that what we do is going to be safe. It's going to follow all the protocols. And, you know, truth be told, we're not going to, if we can't do it right and we can't do it safely, then we, we won't be just swinging open the doors on August 10th. It may it might be a slow opening to make sure we're doing it right and doing it safely. So please feel free to reach out um, to um, Karen Gathers, principal at Burkhalter, uh, love that woman. And I know she's actually working this summer as a summer principal. So if you wanna reach out with her and talk about concerns or you have my email there in the slide and I'd be happy to, to talk with you as well. Great. Uh, my staff just texted me as, as a fun aside, we were recognizing how many famous, amazing people have gone through the Oakland Public Schools. Well, apparently one is watching this town hall right now on Periscope. So big shout out to Yaya Abdul-Mateen, um, movie star. I loved you in um, the, great, the Greatest Showman and I guess The, the Watchmen, I think. Uh, I think you're a graduate of McClyman's, uh, Go Warriors, and um, a huge uh, fan of the Oakland Promise and the East Bay College Fund. I remember you speaking to our scholars. Um, so we're very honored to have Yaya watching us, um, famous actor from, from the town. Um, all right, Kate. Kate Steele asks, what can the city do to ensure citizens wear masks to help contain the spread? Lake Merritt was a mess last weekend with limited mask wearing. Um, I personally have gone out to Lake Merritt with free masks. I will say that we are seeing more safe picnicking. If you, are, if you see a group of people together that live in the same household, uh, they don't necessarily need to wear masks if they are staying six feet away from other people, but we will continue to be distributing the masks. And the more people see other people wearing masks, the better. Uh, we are seeing some increased compliance with mask wearing. Obviously, it is not good enough, and we are going to need to keep doing it. Uh, if you have creative ideas about how we can encourage people to wear masks, please let us know. Again, you do not need to buy one. Uh, you can make one out of a bandana, a t-shirt. You can just pull a scarf up. Uh, and I'm also encouraging people who are out exercising. You don't have to wear a mask while you're exercising, but you should carry one in case you come within six feet of someone. Um, cookie, fortune cookie factory. Will these meal sites be near Chinatown? Um, Julie, uh, do you know if any of the additional school distribution sites are near our Chinatown? And just for the Fortune Cookie Factory, I am working with Sherry Hirota at Asian Health Services to do more check-ins with our Asian communities in their languages and with culturally appropriate volunteers. But Julie, what about near Chinatown? Uh, let me pull up the map and get right back to you, okay? Okay. Um, Nicholas. How about um, are other camps able to operate besides city-run camps if they adhere to the standards you described? This town camp only has spots for 500 people. Yes, uh, due to the guidelines that we have for social distancing, our, our max for this summer, unfortunately, is only going to be 500 kids. Uh, as for the question, are what other camps are going to be able to do, I uh, suggest that they adhere to the Alameda County Health Guidelines uh, and the CDC guidelines. And if they're able to effectively adhere to those guidelines, uh, I feel like there'll be other camp options uh, for kids in Oakland. Um, the question also came up is how much is town camp? Uh, town camp is $180 a week, um, but we have great partners. We have Eat, Learn, Play, who is our presenting sponsor, who provides scholarships for all kids. And we have the Oakland Park and Recreation Foundation Executive Director, Ken Lupoff, 
and they work tirelessly, tirelessly, tirelessly. <laughs> it's getting late uh, to to uh, raise money for kids. And so our motto at Town Camp is that no child, no family will be turned away for lack of financial ability. If you desire to register for the Town Camp, and we have a a, a spot available for you, and you have financial needs or financial issues, uh, we will scholarship your child to make sure that they have a summer experience. Well, and okay. I. Mm -hmm. Julie, please. Yeah, yeah, I can I can loop back. So it looks like the closest nutrition spot from the district for the food for the food would be La Escuelita. So that's right down the street from Lincoln, right past the Oakland Museum. Um, so that will be their closest to Chinatown. And I also just wanted to build off of what Nicholas was saying about other camps being able to run if they adhere to the standards. It is possible. I think the main issue is facilities. So for example, the district is not going to rent out its facilities to any any camps this summer as we're trying to really, you know, get ready for the opening. We're cleaning, we're readjusting everything. Um, for example, Camp Galileo, who has been a strong partner with us all these years, they're, they're not able to use our facility. So I think that's the biggest barrier. But, um, you know, outside or, uh, organizations can run a camp, but it's really about where, where, where's the facilities where it can be, it can be safe. So I think that's the biggest barrier. Yeah, I, I'm reading a lot about camps that are going to be kind of like the school district doing online camps. Uh, and so I think parents are going to have um, some opportunities, but they might not always be outside the home. Uh, we would right. also be remiss if we didn't um, remind you to check out the Oakland Library. Oaklandlibrary.org is still going to be doing live story readings. Um, you can get your library card electronically. You can check out content, not just e-reading, but movies and music. So um, please remember that there are so many resources. And again, thanks to our efforts to close that digital divide, hopefully a lot of students are gonna have access to technology all summer long so that we can at least keep them entertained. Um, another good uh, resource, I know 510 Families Mm -hmm. is an online community and I, I know that's where a lot of parents get advice about what camps actually are going to open but know that there are safety standards camps can operate in a slightly different way but we should be seeing some camps probably not in june as much as july because because mm -hmm. people need time to adjust to these new standards um, yeah, summer camp, kids need to get out. That is, that is a good comment. Um, Maria Campos, and if that's Maria Campos from the Unity Council who runs the Fruitville bid, um, I love you, Maria. Uh, when will the Oakland economy be open? Um, parts of the Oakland economy are open now, but we are unlikely to return to the, exactly the way things were for a very long time. Uh, you, you heard that, that curbside retail is now being allowed. Um, some outdoor businesses like nurseries are being allowed. We know that um, COVID spreads due to close social contact. It also is more dangerous in confined indoor spaces. And so the city of Oakland is working to look at our streets and our sidewalks to see if we can create more outdoor spaces for our businesses to reopen when it is safe. So stay tuned and I am sorry that we don't know the answer to that question right now, but please try your best to support your local businesses. Um, try and order out, um, get delivery or pick up with your favorite local restaurants. Try and have um, order online products that can be delivered to your home, anything that you can afford. Uh, now is a great time to keep supporting our local businesses, even buying gift certificates for when they can start doing business again. Those of us who are blessed enough to be earning a paycheck right now have got to do our part to try and support the local economy during this unprecedented moment. Um, all right, uh, Nicholas, you have a question about parks and rec refunds. Absolutely. Any parent or guardian who has uh, currently enrolled and would like to receive a refund, please contact the center where you have uh, uh, made those uh, prepaid arrangements and we will get you a full refund. 
Um, just to know refunds generally take about 30 days to process. Um, but anybody that wants to uh, unenroll will get a full refund, no fees excluded. Uh, Julie, what about um, who is eligible for OUSD summer learning? So for the most part, our, our target group are kids who are low income and performing below grade level in their academics. That's our, our target group. Uh, we also uh, target English learners, uh, newly arrived immigrants. And then at the high school level, of course, we're looking in terms of credit deficiencies and uh, students that need to make up credits for high school. But Julie, you mentioned that there are some resources that you make available for all families. So exactly. not just summer school, summer learning. What are some of those other um, resources for everybody? Right, so when, when we talk about OUSD summer learning, we're really we're talking about you know connecting students with a credential teacher and having some direct instruction. Uh, the other summer uh, resources that were on the slide are really around um, the, the learning applications that you can access online to keep learning going. I mean, I would, for example, at the secondary level, I'm sure a lot of families know if they have middle school or high school kids, the power of Khan Academy. If you have a student that is going to get ready to take algebra for the first time or take geometry for the first time, I would be spending the summer working through those modules. The second you get stuck, there's a video that pops up that does some direct instruction. There's a lot of little incentives and, and little guidelines along the way to keep your kid engaged and motivated. So online learning is a new reality for us and OUSD, if you go to the Family Central portal um, where I included the link, will give you a lot of opportunities um, to engage in online learning through the summer. Julie, what's that link so our interns can post it online again? It's, um, okay, I will, um, it's on It's on my slide. Let me go grab it. Okay, just, I'll, I'll uh, hopefully they're very good and they'll find <laughs> yeah. uh, also, it. Turned, if you tuned in late, I hope you um, heard the good news that Julie shared that all you OUSD students that got Chromebooks lent out to them, get to keep them all summer long. And there's even a map of free Wi-Fi spots that those Chromebooks can uh, automatically connect to for free. Uh, and OUSD has a map of those spots on their website. Um, Nicholas, do you know anything about when swimming pools will open? Uh, yes, we are currently working on a plan to possibly open swimming pools. There are a couple of factors in place that we must be able to address before we're able to do that safely. It's not just the interactions in the water, which also have to be socially distanced, but it's all the distance. It's also the interactions that would take place into in the uh, locker rooms, interactions that will take place uh, coming through the hallway for registration and other things like that. Uh, we are actively devising a plan. Um, the CD, we are following CDC guidelines to devise those plans. Um, and we should have something out for the public uh, in about two weeks. And um, Nicholas, the next two questions are really for you too, because private camps are subject to the same kind of health rules that, that you are. So where can parents find out about those rules to make sure that their private camps are complying with them? They actually are the latest um, rules that have been uh, administered through the Alameda County Health. And so uh, I will provide a link uh, momentarily so that um, our talented uh, support staff can provide that link to the general public. All right, but yes, um, small pods, uh, lots of sanitizing, lots of social distancing, but camp can happen. Um, Marissa Raya, who we all know and love, who's an amazing public servant in our economic development um, department. Um, Nicholas, she's saying when she goes to the park's website, she's not seeing links to the current activity. Um, so she's asking if we can post that link again. So I know you're, you're looking for that. So there's, there's another request from Marissa. Okay. Um, I am an essential worker in Oakland. I have coworkers that don't want to wear a face covering. How can face coverings be enforced at my workplace? I have asthma and I am considered at risk. Um, I am so sorry. And I know that this is such a frightening time for people, especially people who are having to work outside the home. 
Uh, and so I encourage you, if you don't feel comfortable telling your coworkers to bring it up to your supervisor. You also should be able to reach out to Cal OSHA um, because this is a, a safety con, uh, requirement. And if you have asthma, we encourage you to get tested frequently. There's no technical limit to how often you can get a virus test at one of the free, no insurance required testing sites at Oakland. I understand that our recommendation is uh, to get tested every two weeks uh, if you are working outside of the home and don't have any symptoms. Of course, if you have any symptoms at all, get tested immediately. But it is really important that everyone follow these rules. You can report this to the Alameda County Sheriff's website. It's COVID-19 compliance at acgov.org. But I would um, recommend first going to the supervisor and then Cal OSHA um, is the standards for workplace safety. Um, please, everyone should take this seriously. If you want the mayor to give them a call, let me know. I'd be happy to call your workplace. Um, 510 families follow up to Heather's question. Will any camps in Oakland be able to accommodate children of folks who are working from home? Nicholas, do you know the answer to that or, or Julie? Um, specifically for parks and recreation, uh, with the limited number of, of spots that we have, um, we, we are, are trying to limit those, those uh, few spots to essential workers and, and for parents or guardians that have to leave home. Um, in a normal camp situation, we could house 1,500, 1,600 kids. And so we would try to get as many kids together for a fantastic camp experience as possible. But in this particular COVID season, we only have room for 500 kids. And so we are asking families that have other options to please look into some of those options as we have to serve the, uh, Oakland's most vulnerable during this time. But that, but that's for your camp. It's not, um, it's not a, a health or a county rule that the children of folks who are working from home may not attend a camp. Is that correct? Well, the current Alameda rule says that we can provide um, childcare, uh, recreational programs and summer camps for those who are essential workers and for those that must leave home. That's the current order. Well, that is something that we'll try and get some clarity from the health officer. Uh, Andrew has a question about the shelter in place order. Again, the current shelter in place order does not have an expiration date. The more recent order that was issued on May 18th specifically state stated that shelter in place is in effect until it is lifted and it is evaluated every two to three weeks. And so um, unfortunately there is no expiration date at this time. Stay tuned for a new order that potentially would loosen these restrictions. Uh, do you have any systematic testing plans for the county? Jury duty or library on wheels style maybe. Uh, we need to test not only those who are symptomatic. Uh, again, we are encouraging people who are not symptomatic but who are working outside the home to get tested. You may get tested for free at the City of Oakland sites. Also, if you have any underlying medical condition, you are a smoker or you're over the age of 65, you do not need to have any symptoms to get tested. And even if you have a light system, you're just not feeling well, you have a headache, you have a sore throat, that is enough to get you tested. So please, we are, we are, we are posting information about testing sites on all of our slow street barriers. We're actually handing out postcards in some of the parts of the city that have had the highest incidence of uh, positive tests as well as um, death rates. Uh, please, we, we absolutely, our plan for the county is to test two people for every thousand, two tests per day for every thousand people. So in Oakland, we should be doing, let's see what the math is, 860 tests a day in Oakland. That is our goal. Um, Tony Westbrook asks, uh, what about the inner summer camp programs at the recreational parks? 
Nicholas? Hi, I believe she's talking about the town camp program. Again, we will operate town camp at 22 locations and we have room for 500 kids. Great. Um, here's a question about um, struggling small owner operator businesses that don't qualify for PPP loans. Um, I highly recommend you check out Kiva.org, K-I-V-A, Kiva.org, um, our zero interest, zero fee loans up to $15,000 that are crowdsourced. So they, they're very easy to get. In general, please go to uh, oaklandbusinesscenter.com, oaklandbusinesscenter.com, and fill out um, a, a little questionnaire about what you're experiencing, and, and a real live pe person will call you and talk to you about what resources may be helpful to you in this moment. So um, again, if the interns could post oaklandbusinesscenter.com, and in fact, you might actually talk to Marissa Raya, who posted a question earlier. Um, Robin Walker asked, what about the protesters in downtown right now, Black Lives Matter? Robin, absolutely. Um, I shared some sentiments at the beginning of this town hall, recognizing um, the travesty of, of injustice uh, that has happened in Minneapolis, uh, our shared anger, our shared disappointment, and our shared commitment to bring a, a more just system into being. Um, and uh, again, uh, I have posted official comments um, about my reaction to this, this tragedy. And we will facilitate peaceful protesting. And, and right now it's, it's peaceful. We will pr absolutely facilitate and protect people's ability to express themselves um, in this moment of, of anger. Um, is there an agenda for which businesses will reopen in Oakland? Um, this will be determined by the health officer. And I apologize to people who felt uh, last time there wasn't a lot of warning. Um, just know that as a mayor, I don't necessarily get a lot of warning either. But that is okay. This is a moment where we have to trust data and science. This is a moment that we have to trust our health professionals. Um, they are constantly looking at risk um, of the activity. And again, we know that human contact uh, being a, a, for long periods of time in an indoor space, that those are high risk activities for the spread of this virus. Uh, so they are going to be looking at risk as well as the essential nature of the activity. But going forward, they're really going to be assessing risk. And that's why you're going to see potentially outdoor dining allowed before indoor dining or different modifications to retail to allow people to pick up items at the front door but not go inside the store. So get ready for those kinds of changes in the way that we do business in Oakland. Uh, Shiloh Church wants to coordinate a gathering of local churches for a time of racial reconciliation, a drive-in event at a large parking lot. Speakers from different congregations could be invited to speak and join in prayer for reconciliation in our community and our nation. Is this allowed? And the answer is yes. Uh, car gatherings of, I believe, up to 200 cars are allowed and the idea of doing a drive-in service, um, just kind of like our old fashioned use of, of drive-in movies where you can turn in, tune into a radio station is absolutely allowed. And our office would be um, delighted to facilitate that. And that uh, holds true also to funerals. Um, that, that answer is also true. Um, again, car gatherings are now allowed. That is part of the more recent um, order. I wanna take this time as we're nearing 7.30 to invite Julie and Nick to just offer some closing thoughts um, as, we, as we conclude tonight's town hall. Um, Julie, we'll start with you. Yeah, I just wanna acknowledge the turmoil that's going on right now with the, with, uh, the tragedies or in, and the killings of the young black males. And, you know, it, it's a crisis. And um, I, I just hope that, you know, we as Oaklanders can come together 
um, to address this in real ways. And I also hope that during the summer we keep learning going and that we keep kids active and engaged. And there's a lot of ways that you can do it. And uh, please reach out to the schools if you need any ideas or any help or any access to resources. Thank you for inviting me. Thank you, Julie, you are awesome. Nicholas. Uh, thank you. Um, uh, I also share, uh, you know, very uh, deep emotions about what's happening um, you know, locally and, and, and in Minneapolis. Um, I, I spent um, three years in Minneapolis and so I'm very familiar with um, that place. Um, I don't know if everyone noticed, but I am also a black man and I am the father of two black men. And so, uh, you know, this is a situation that affects us all very differently, but it hits uh, very, very close to home for me. And so uh, I, I just asked us to continue to be uh, what the spirit of Oakland is. And it's diverse, it's inclusive, um, and we uh, appreciate one another for who we are. Um, it's a place where um, if we do things right, we can be an example for um, the nation and, and, and for internationally. Um, Oakland is, is, is famous for a lot of things, and I think diversity is one of them. And so uh, we send our thoughts and prayers and and um, and, 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 um, and pass that, you know, we're actually past thoughts and prayers. And so it's time for all of us to be as active as, as we can to, uh, to fight for justice for everybody. Um, with that Oakland parks and recreation stands, um, ready to help. Um, again, we have scholarships for everyone that needs assistance. Um, if there is anything else that we can offer you, we ask that you just please reach out to us. The phone number is 510-238-PARKS and we welcome your questions and comments. Um, thank you, Mayor, for having us in on this evening. Great, thank you, Julie. Thank you, Nicholas. Prayers for Mr. Floyd's family and let us honor his memory by fighting for the justice that everyone, especially black, brown, African-American uh, residents of this country and this world uh, deserve. Uh, we will be back next week. Uh, this. Thursday and every Thursday until further notice, sharing with you information, answering your questions, hearing your comments, and sticking together. This is the only way we are going to get through this pandemic, by staying united as a community together. Thank you, Oakland. Have a good night.